Every morning should start with a little coffee and cannibalism. Hello and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day, and today I am taking a look at the 2014 kinda horror, kinda not movie, The Deadlands. I saw this on Shudder, and uh, there was one particular reason that I picked this, but I'll get into that in just a little bit. I would want to preface that I watched this because it was on Shudder, and typically my criteria for what would make a Rotted Review or not is if it's on IMDb with a meta tag of horror as one of the genres which I found out after watching this movie, it isn't. But the fact that it was on Shudder, and the, also the fact that it has extreme amounts of gore and violence, I, if I were to categorize this movie without that, I would say that this is an action-adventure slash coming-of-age movie, but it also has so much violence, so much blood, and so much gore that I think it would actually alienate some mainstream audiences while appealing to horror audiences. So... It, it winds up in this weird place in between, and it, honestly, I would say that horror should probably be one of the meta tags on IMDb, but it just currently isn't. But regardless, I am reviewing it anyway, uh, because I really, really enjoyed it, and I do think that the violence would, you know, scratch that itch for some of the, you know, horror fans out there. Uh, the other reason I picked this is because when you are reviewing, or at least watching movies such as I typically do... Uh, that is to say, I kind of cover the, the whole gamut, uh, including bottom of the barrel kind of stuff. You tend to see patterns, a lot of repetition, um, you know, with it being popular right now, uh, as in the Stephen King's it, uh, I can't count how many B grade, low budget clown movies there are out there. Um, and you know, there's other patterns. I mean, I just finished reviewing a uh, haunting at the rectory about the Borley rectory and then up pops another movie about the Borley rectory. And I can't even bring myself to try that one yet. Um, but when I came across this one on shutter and I saw that this was a horror movie, <laughs> uh, about the Maori tribe, uh, about Maori tribes in New Zealand, uh, I was on board. I'm like, this is an original, this is new, this is fresh, this is nothing I've ever seen before. Uh, just for that sake alone, I'm on board, let's start rolling. And what I found about this movie is that as an action-slash-adventure-slash-coming-of-age movie, it was actually really, really decent. I'm not going to say that it's anything epic for the ages, but it was surprisingly good and engaging, and the characters uh, were sympathetic, and I latched onto them pretty hard. Uh, so this movie follows the character of Hungi primarily. I think I'm pronouncing it right. I'm not really sure. I kind of went back throughout the movie and I couldn't find any instance of anybody actually saying the name. Maybe it's in there and I just missed it, but I kind of spot checked throughout. Most people just refer to him as the boy. Uh, and he is a teenager of a Maori tribe that has brokered a peace treaty with another tribe. And the treaty is put into question when the other tribe come and visit and there is a kerfuffle. A kerfuffle that leads to something going higgledy-piggledy and the treaty is now broken and in the midst of a tense moment, the other tribe comes and attacks Hongi's tribe during the night. Basically decimating the male population and uh, most of the females. The, the tribe is pretty much gone. Uh, but there are a few staggering survivors. But Hungi manages to survive by basically being knocked out and thrown down the bottom of a hill. So he basically wakes up in the aftermath of everything and finds his father slaughtered and you know pretty much everybody in his tribe slaughtered. And now, by rights, he is the chief of a tribe that barely exists anymore. Uh, so he takes it upon himself to try and seek revenge. He goes after the tribe that attacked them, uh, led by Wirapa, and goes to seek his revenge by killing all these other warriors. But he's just a teenager. They are, you know, the one thing that this movie does well is balance. Well, a lot of this is hand to hand or close combat kind of fighting. And at no point does anybody ever feel like cannon fodder. Uh, the warriors there, I mean, you get the sense that going up against them is a monumental task. Um, so he's basically going out on a suicide run to try and avenge his tribe. But 
Weirapa makes the mistake of taking a shortcut. Uh, he wants to save five days off of his journey back home and cut through the Deadlands, which are a talked about in secret kind of, uh, you know, patch of land, uh, area of land there that uh, tribes are basically not supposed to go. It's not really sacred ground, but it is mystical, and there is supposedly a monster in the woods that will, you know, come and kill you if you step on the land. But begrudgingly, he wants to save five days, so off we go. And when Hongi follows him in there, he meets up with the monster, who happens to just be a different last survivor of a different tribe, who is extraordinarily skilled at fighting. So Hongi basically enlists his help. He says, you know, my tribe was decimated too. These people are on your land. If you're going to go get them, let me join you. We'll enact vengeance together. Uh, and in the midst of this, the monster, that's uh, what the character's name was in this, uh, teaches Hongi the difference between uh, skilled fighting and absolute battle brawling. The difference between sparring with somebody and the difference between I need to kill him as fast as possible or he will kill me as fast as possible. This is what I need to do. Um, and together they go and engage in that. And as things continue, Hongi continues to learn lessons and grow up to be a bit more of a, a man and a tribal leader as he enacts his revenge, you know, slowly upon the uh, receding tribe. So <clears throat> the movie takes off from there. I'm not going to spoil anything else, but uh, that is generally the plot. And now I'm going to go ahead and throw up the scores. As always, four different categories, each one worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. Uh, the plot I thought was fairly decent as far as the quality thing goes. Um, it wasn't, like I said, epic, but it was well done. The characters were well defined. If I had any real complaints... I would say that around at the end of Act 2, there is a point in which the monster and Hongi come across another group of people, uh, by all rights, seemingly peaceful on their land, uh, in the Deadlands. And at that point, the movie tends to drag just a little bit. But I, I forgive it in hindsight. At the moment I was watching it, I was thinking, well, this is a lull. But going back through it, and in hindsight, what that allowed to happen was some scenes that... A, allowed for the monster character to establish some of his backstory and establish some of his sympathetic character traits uh, through some violent means. Uh, but I thought that in retrospect, it was a, an apt pause and well done overall. And I think that that's kind of the name of the game throughout all of this. I am not familiar enough with the Maori tribes and the Maori customs and the Maori culture to speak to any level of accuracy. I am not claiming anything about that in any of this review. If this movie was completely wildly inaccurate and offensive to the actual Maori people, then I think that that's unfortunate, but I am ignorant and blind to that, and I admit that. Uh, so I'm not going to make any claims to the accuracy of this or the, you know, uh, how close it comes to uh, actual, you know, I know, I know that this touched on cannibalism and I know that in the actual Maori types, there was a fair bit of cannibalism. Uh, but beyond that, uh, and the, and the use of the, uh, Mares as the primary weapons, I really can't speak to any level of accuracy. So I can't take that into account with a plot. What I can take into account is the pacing, the characters, the motivations, the conflict, and all told, I thought it was very, very good. Uh, the intent this was very brutal. Uh, so much of this was very close hand-to-hand -hand combat and very, very brutal on showing all of that. You felt every impact. I mean, nothing about this was fluid or graceful. This was brutal combat and you felt every impact. Everybody had a, a lot of weight to them. You know, you just, everything, was, boom. And... On that note, from an action-adventure point of view, that worked really, really well. It sold the fighting performances, and it was engaging on that level. Uh, but as far as the blood and guts and gore goes, that also worked well from that horror lover's point of view, or even, you know, the just kind of the uh, extreme action-adventure side of things. So in the impact and the, uh, you know, how it went, I would say that it achieved its intent nicely. Um, 
again, I cannot take into account actual Maori accuracy here. If its intention was to portray an accurate representation of times past within the Maori tribes, I can't speak to how well it did that. So just going by what I think it was trying to convey to me, a layman, I think that it actually achieved what it was setting out to do. The acting, I thought, was superb. Uh, Hongi, played by James Rolleston, did a very good job. He was sympathetic. I was able to identify with his character, latch on to it, and really seemed to care about him as he engaged in his arc, uh, as, as he grew, as he learned, as he fought. But the real standout performance was by the warrior, or the monster, played by Lawrence McCora, that there was a lot of backstory that happened in subtle ways. At no point was a lot of what he's about and what he went through and how he became what he is now. Uh, at, at no point is it fully, completely, point by point spelled out for the audience. So much of it is sold in bits and pieces through the acting performances and through slight flashback moments and, uh, well, for lack of a better word, let's say uh, vision states. Uh, and I thought that the performance of the warrior as somebody that has this pain and has this not really hope for any future, but at the same time also willing to help the Hongi character engage in what he's going through, uh, almost seeking a level of redemption, I thought was very, very well done, very well performed. Uh, again, I'm not going to say anything completely epic, but... Nicely done. Uh, 20 on the acting there, and I have really no reservations about that. Um, the only rule, it's not a complaint. Uh, it's just that the Weirapa character, uh, it was just, uh, he was the bad guy. And he played the bad guy well, but that's pretty much all he was. So it was very one note as far as an antagonist goes. Uh, but the technical, I gave a 21 out of 25. Uh, the camera work was phenomenal. The sound design was great. The score was great. Uh, and as far as the practical effects go, I thought they were fantastic. They were brutal. They were visceral. And they really sold the tone of the film. So that gives us a total of 78 out of 100 points. Now, would I recommend this movie? Um, yeah. I would. I think it's absolutely a fantastic film that is worth watching. I'm glad that I watched it. I'm glad that I found it. I'm glad that Shudder had it. As long as you bear in mind that it's not really scary. I mean, if it is, it is many things. It is thought-provoking. It is touching. It is violent. It is uh, thrilling. But it is not scary. And if you don't mind that, it, you know, as far as you know, what you're in the mood for tonight, and you also don't mind reading subtitles because this is all subtitled, then I would absolutely recommend this film. Uh, it is a near, <laughs> near must watch in my books. So that should about do it. That's my review of 2014's The Deadlands. I really thank you for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. And if you want to support me further, my Patreon link is below. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.